stretch pants again in the faded soldier blue which i think is such a stunning combination and uh the the black boot i notice that there are a number of um uh hidden zippers in these jackets now what are these for betsy they can't be for is it for mad money <laughs> well it depends on where they're placed they can be wherever you want them uh-huh you know, for the pockets so that no snow gets into it the zipper holding the hood in because it's easier to put the hood on and off mm -hmm. with the zipper than it is with the snaps mm -hmm. then there's zippers up the side so that the jacket will fit tightly around the hips keeping that straight sleek look that it should have and very often you'll find a zipper hidden in the uh, arm and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen you'll excuse the fact that i'm out of breath but about 10 or 15 minutes ago a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of dallas let me quote to you this and i'll you'll excuse me if i am out of breath a bulletin this is from the united press from dallas President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired. The president, his limp body carried in the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, has rushed to Parkland Hospital. Uh, and if you'll excuse me if I give some directions and we talk about what we're going to do here for the next few minutes, but Bobby, let's tape this, if you please, particularly the interview with the eyewitness people. It is being taped good. Here's a uh, piece of copy that was rushed uh, to me and was torn off from the United Press in Dallas. President Kennedy has been shot in Dallas, has been shot in Dallas, Texas. He was shot as a motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed the president. She cried out. We're standing on Houston Street between Maine and the next street over. Jerry, come in, w would you please? Uh, and the next street over, we watched the president come by and gave him the applaud that is due the office of the President of the United States, and as he turned left, two or three shots rang out. We thought they were firecrackers until, uh, I thought they did, until the last shot rang out, and we heard people screaming. And we rushed over in time to see a policeman standing behind one of the fire poles, lo looking around as if to, uh, for some place to shoot, someone to shoot at. Uh, I'd like to remind you here that as the news comes in to the newsroom, we will be on the air. We'll have our eyewitness people here in just a moment. Uh, Vicki, would you see if they need some coffee or something? These people are awfully shaken up. They come awfully close. They were in the line of fire. Jer? I remember, Jay, you said, uh, I thought it was, you know, uh, a uh, firecracker. firecracker or something like that. And then they followed one shot and then a second or two later, another shot and then another second or the two third and then one. the third shot. And you said the man's been shot at and we both turned. No, I said, my God, that's gunshot. That's right. Oh. And then we turned right over we were behind the... Bobby, why don't you just take your shot over there? and pan around and we will walk over and pick up the audio. Let's turn the mic on. I can't hear you, Johnny. What do you want? You want me to move back a little bit? Is it all right now? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the newsroom of our radio and television station. As you can see, most of the boys are out. Uh, Bert, let's see. Let's get reorganized here. Grab that cable over there. We're on the air, Bert, and let's talk to you just a minute here. Is this all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the chief cameraman and assistant news director of WFA Television. This is Bert Ship. Bert, we have brought the people pretty much up to date. Uh, would you tell them exactly what you know as of this point? Well, Jay, I was standing at the uh, trademark waiting his arrival there. All of a sudden, the, uh, we saw them approaching. They didn't slow down. As a matter of fact, they were going 70, 80 miles an hour past us. I, everybody was unknowingly, uh, didn't know what happened there at the trademark. And then uh, I jumped in a police car and went to Parkland. When I got there, I found that, uh, that nobody knew too much about where he was hit, but they knew that the president was shot in the head. This is what I've been told now, Jay. The president was shot in the head. Conley was shot in the chest.
Both of them are still alive when I left the hospital. Do you have some film? And uh, yeah, I have film well, at the hospital. You get the film and see if you can get it developed real quick yeah, and we'll put it on the air and, and uh, run through. Uh, one thing, one quote we got out there was Yarbrough said the scene was too gruesome to describe. I know. And uh, that's, I've spent most of my time, so I'm going to get the film ready now. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you up to date. Jerry Haynes and I were within about 100 yards of where the president was shot. No, they're queuing up the film now that Bert took at Parkland Hospital, as I understand it. Uh, Jay, it's going to start out uh, of some brief scenes at the Market Hall, okay. or at Trademark, where the uh, president was due to arrive. It's about uh, probably a mile from the scene of the uh, downtown shooting. And, uh, of course, we had no word at Market Hall as to what went on downtown. Roll of film. And it was uh, a complete mystery. The police didn't even know. But we knew, as you'll see by halfway through the film, the police went on past the Market Hall area, or Trademark, rather, and, uh, and on it to That's Parkland cool. Hospital. Bob, whenever you're ready, go ahead and roll. Let's see what we got. Excuse me. No. Oh, this is a shot. There we go. Here's Market... Uh, there's Market Hall. Trademark is right across the street from there. They had a big welcome sign for the president there at the corner of Industrial and Stimmons. It uh, says, Welcome, Jackie. And now, this was the place where the president was supposed yeah. to make his speech. Here's at some uh, uh, a gentleman carrying signs. I guess you'd call them gentlemen. They uh, had these signs. They were, weren't causing any trouble. They were run off uh, moments after this, uh, told that there was private property and they couldn't be around there. And uh, they. Uh, wouldn't talk to us other than they said their signs spoke for themselves. There's some of the crowd, 450 extra policemen called on duty. Everybody waited anxiously and waited and waited and waited. There's the policeman ushering a fellow by the name of Joyner from Grand Prairie back across the street. The boys had their mouths taped up so they wouldn't be able to answer any questions. Now, there goes the president on up the hill there. He's been, uh, this is after we found out there was something wrong. And, uh... Speeding past. Yeah, them. and here's the disappointed crowd left there at the trademark. I went up on the, the, uh, roadway there to ask some policemen. Here we go to the hospital. There's, uh, homicide detectives in front of us. There's Parkland Hospital. There's the entrance. Police cars all over the place. There is uh, Congressman Wright. He's, he's teary-eyed, as you could imagine. And there's the presidential uh, limousine, the Secret Service men shaking it over. There's Wright again. Wright and Yarbrough. Yarbrough. There's uh, the Secret Service man is taking its type of a mattress or something out of the back of the car there. And there's Chief Curry. He just couldn't believe it. He had put everything he had into this visit and uh, gave the uh, men all types of instruction. There's inside of a car. I don't know whether that must have been Conley's car. There's some more shots of the... Everybody waiting expectantly. At this time, no one knew anything. And there goes Ms. Lincoln, the president's press uh, secretary, inside. And there's uh, go, uh, Yarborough again, Senator Yarborough. And he says... The sight was too gruesome to describe. And there's a final parting shot from Parkman. Now we have some more videotape. Let's see what it is. This is Ed Hogan of WFAA Television in Dallas, Texas. We are standing on the grounds of Parkland Hospital where President Kennedy was brought just uh, a few hours ago and has died, as most of you have already, uh, already know. We want to uh, possibly talk to some of the people here who are standing. What is your name, please? Uh, Mrs. Quincy Adams. Mrs. Quincy, are you from Dallas, Miss Adams? Yes. Memory of the president with a simple inscription. Bob Walker, WFAA-TV, Dallas, Texas, interrupting. There's been a shooting at Dallas Police Station as Oswald was being transferred. For details, Bill Lord, ABC at City Hall. Bill. Just one minute ago, they were bringing Oswald out. He had apparently... Uh, Changed clothes. He was just going out the door, heading towards the armored car, and there was a bang. We believe it was a shot. And apparently, what has happened to it, we do not know at the present time. A policeman rushed to the scene, attempting to ascertain what had happened. The photographers were taking pictures. Is there someone down on the floor over there?